I joined the Air Force to better myself and to get a college education out of it. My grandfather served in the Vietnam War, and my dad had went to Army basic training. He suffered an injury during that, and even though he didn't complete it, and my grandfather also went through war for the Army, it kind of gave me a motivation and drive to join the Air Force. I was in, in my uh, high school career, and I started to talk to a recruiter. I did Air Force JROTC, so Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps, and I started to like the lifestyle of it. I started to like the way they carry themselves through that. And I just liked the benefits that came with the military and the way people would basically transform themselves and become a better version of themselves. So I've been in the Air Force for two years and about two to three months, and I am currently in A1C and Amherst First Class. So to the Air Force, I am a Special Missions Aviator, which is AFSC 1 Alpha 9 X1. So I actually went into depth prior to me shipping out. I went to depth four months prior to me actually shipping out for the Air Force. And I talked to my recruiter a little bit about the jobs that I wanted and what I wanted to do in the Air Force. So he sat down with me and he told me that he actually got a pre-slot for which the recruiters get and hooked me up with the Special Mr. Xavier job. So I'd gotten this job prior to going to basic training and knowing what I was going to be. This job was definitely something I wanted to do. Prior to me actually picking a job that I wanted and making my dream sheet, I actually went to airforce.com and looked at all the different air crew jobs that the Air Force had to offer. And I came across Special Missions Aviation and I knew it was something I definitely wanted to do. I researched everything I could about the job and about other people's stories through YouTube and just Googling and everything that I could. And I can only find the actual airforce.com version of the job with the video on there to get the most I could out of it and it was definitely something I wanted to do off the gate there was another two or three aircrew jobs that I wanted to do but this job to me spoke to me specifically of its mindset and its mission set. So when I was going through the process to join the Air Force there was a couple of the jobs that I wanted to do. The If I had to go back and do it again I would definitely put down Loadmaster or a in-flight refueler so a boom operator for uh, the Air Force it would be the probably the two top ones I would do. If I had to put down more, I would probably do something along the lines of air crew, and if I had to go down, I would also do maintenance. So for me, I was 17 years old at the time when I joined the Air Force, and I definitely signed a four-year contract just because there had nobody been in my family for recent years at the time, and they weren't ever in the Air Force. So I only signed a four-year contract just to see how I would feel in the Air Force, and if just basically testing the waters with it to see how I would like the Air Force or not. But I would definitely recommend if you see a job that you like and that really speaks to you and that you think you're going to like, I would definitely sign a six-year. Me personally, I would, would have gone back and signed a six-year just to get more out of this job in a longer period of time. So initially, tech school for my job was at Lackland Air Force Base. So as soon as I graduated to basic training, I went straight to tech school on Lackland Air Force Base at the 344th Training Squadron, which is basically at the corner of the base. And from that, it was a pipeline job. So I went to uh, multiple different bases, including Fairchild Air Force Base, Kerlin Air Force Base, and Herbert Field Air Force Base. Tech school for me was uh, long. I think all in all, it took me a year and nine months to finally earn earn my wings and to be able to, to perform my job without an instructor with me. But the year and nine months also included gaps in training. So when you're going through the Special Missions Aviator Pipeline, they don't have a streamlined to where you can basically go through the whole job course by course. You're going to have gaps in training where you're going to have to basically stop and take a break because there's classes already ahead of you that are backed up. So all in all for me, it took me a year and nine months. I definitely enjoyed my tech school. I came from a small town in North Carolina and it got me to go travel the world. It got me to go travel across the United States and see what was out there. It allowed me to meet multiple people from different countries and different states and just see their mindset and outlook on their jobs that they had, especially at Sear, there was a bunch of different air crew jobs with us. And it also just allowed me to basically better myself. I was always a kid that would put stuff off, but being a special missions aviator going through the pipeline, it definitely allowed me to push myself and to keep going harder at what I wanted to in order to become what I wanted to be. So for the special missions aviator, 
you get to pick your aircraft. So like you make a dream sheet of jobs at basic training, you get to make a dream sheet of the type of aircraft you want to be on for being a special missions aviator, which would include an AC-130J, HH-60, CV-22, or the UH-1 also known as the Huey. And so for those aircraft, for the AC-130J specifically, what I'm on, the only base you can go to right now is Herbert Field, Florida, because that is a newer aircraft to the Air Force. They are currently working to set it up at another squadron here and also go on to Cannon Air Force Base. So about my job uh, through a day-to-day -day basis, a special missions aviator basically is a flight engineer, a load master, and an aerial gunner. It's something that the Air Force decided to combine three jobs into one. So my day-to-day -day basis when I go to fly, we will actually have a set-down brief with the crew and decide who's going to be on either a 105 millimeter gun on the aircraft or the 30 millimeter gun on the aircraft, or you'll be playing as the load master flight engineer for the flight. And basically, whichever one you decide on, you get put on that's when you uh, go ahead and do that for the day. So if I was a load master, the flight engineer of the day, I would be managing fuel on the aircraft. I would be running uh, emergency procedures if need be. And if I was on the 105 or the 30 millimeter, I would be basically running that gun and operating the gun throughout the entire flight and making sure that if there's any malfunctions that happen with the gun, I'll be there to fix that. But when I'm not flying on not flying days, when you graduate from the pipeline training and you go to the squadron, you will be able to get an uh, extra duty so you're not sitting around all day. So for me, I'm a MCC, so I'm a Mission Control Center Airman. So basically, it, when I'm not flying, I'm sitting at a desk and I am getting aircraft status. If the aircraft is parked in the right spot, if it's got the fuel on it, if it's got the right ammo load out coming to it, and if there's anything wrong with the aircraft, I'm there to inform the crew and let them know. So in a work week, it honestly varies for us because we are a flying squadron. So sometimes in a week, you could be flying three times a week and flights usually range anywhere from four to six hours. So that automatically right there is 18 hours if it's six hour flights throughout the entire week. But if some majority of the time, you're going to have at least one flight a week. But if you have one flight a week, you'll be, for me, MCC, we're working six hour shifts. So Monday, so if I flew Monday, then the rest of the week, I'd be working six hour shifts. So right around probably, I would say 30, 35 hour work weeks. So for a special missions aviator, uh, I know for every AFSC, you get a degree assigned to you from the Community College of the Air Force. For us, we get assigned uh, the Aviation Operations degree, and basically that can push you towards getting a private pilot's license to allow you to go to the airlines. That's currently what I'm working on. But as a special mission aviator, all in all, you could definitely go towards a flight engineer, or you can go to as a load master. And in a way, you can also be a mechanic. You just have to work a little bit more towards that one versus going to the flight engineer load master area. Yeah, so for special missions aviators, it's definitely a high deployment job because for AC-130Js in specific, we are a CAS asset, so we are close air support. And downrange, we're always flying every single day, eight hour missions, just so that we know the guys on the ground are safe. But for definitely for other airframes, you're always going to be deploying because a special missions aviator is on an aircraft that's vital to a mission. Whether you're CV-22s, infill, exfilling guys, if you're on an HH-60 doing CASAVAC, or if you're UH-1s, they don't deploy overseas, but they do stay uh, home stationed in order to help with stateside rescues over in the mountains or anything like that. But most definitely, you're going to be deploying a lot with uh, the special missions aviator uh, career field. Yeah, so definitely I'm trying to make the Air Force a 20-year career. Uh, it might not be as a special missions aviator. I definitely want to end up commissioning one day and become a pilot for the Air Force. But if that does not work out the way it's planned, I will definitely make a special missions aviator a 20-year career just because the lifestyle and the people in the job make it so much more fun and uh, so many more adventures to have in this job. So I would definitely make this a 20-year career, uh, no doubt about it. So... For me, being a special missions aviator right now, my top job, since I'm still enlisted, my top job would probably go next to a loadmaster, but a uh, special missions aviator definitely still outranks that to me in my eyes because of learning all the things that we get to do to help support the mission. I would definitely stay with this job. But like I said, once I commission, if I do get to commission, I would definitely go to uh, be a pilot for C-17s because that is the best platform. <laughs> Yeah, so brand new Air Force Airman, uh, becoming a special missions aviator, you definitely want to stay in the books. You definitely don't want to, you can do other things on the outside life, but you don't want to have, when it comes to study time, 
make sure you don't have any outside distractions. I know when I went to Lackland for the very first time, going to my job training, I definitely had a couple of airmen on my hall that were special missions aviator candidates, if you will. And I asked them, like, hey, how was that job? How was this? How was that? And they would kind of put you down about it. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to try to beat you down about this job because it is a definitely a hard job to learn. But stay in the books and trust yourself. You're definitely going to be able to pass this job with flying colors. And as Air Force wide goes, I would definitely don't be afraid to ask questions. You're going to have a supervisor. Don't be afraid to go over to them and ask them. I personally was scared to ask sometimes just because I didn't want to get uh, made fun of or ask some stupid questions, but definitely ask for help when needed and definitely stay in the books and try to understand the best as possible you can when learning this job. Yeah, so if you want to find me to have any further questions with me or just see how my day-to-day -day lifestyle is, I definitely post a lot of it on Instagram and you can find me on there at Adam underscore Honeycut. That's A-D-A-M underscore H-U-N-E-Y-C-U-T-T. -T. And also you can... Uh, Add me on Snapchat at Adam H3.